Here I am with Jack Mueller, two-time All-American finalist, a couple like ten days ago. Uh, I haven't talked to you in a while. You shaved your hair since nationals on your face. Yeah. How long was that growing for? Uh, I think I was growing it out since the pit duel. So I guess February, it was about a month. A month. What do you think? Did you like it, or is it gone for a reason? Uh, it was a week too long. A week. <laughs> Okay. Was it getting itchy? Mm hmm All right. And I start playing with it, and it was just annoying. If you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Oh, uh, this is a tough one. I don't know. I would say a lion. Just a lion. go with the basic one. I'm, da I'm down with that. Heart of a lion. Um, so it's been just over a week since the championship experience. Tell me a little bit. Like, you've had some time to reflect. You know, what are your thoughts on the experience? Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was good seeing all the support around me, and I got to wrestle on the biggest stage. That so was amazing. Um, if, I, if there was anything I could do over, I'd want to win it, obviously, right? But um, I don't know. It's uh, It's been a, an amazing experience, and it's definitely motivating me to want to be better uh, in the future. You had a tough side of the bracket. The top side, you went through Bresser, Rivera. I'm sure I'm skipping somebody right now. It's been a long day. Uh, do you, are you when the brackets came out? Did you look at it right away, or are you just taking it one match at a time? Uh, I did because I was sitting with my buddy Jiello, and he was like so excited. It was his first NCAA experience, and so when he saw his, he was like pretty pumped because he thought he had a really good draw. Um, he could have performed a lot better, and I think he could have had a great tournament, but. Um, he was like, yeah, and I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll look at mine. So I saw it, and I was like, this is what I expected. Let's do this. Did he look at yours and go, sorry, bro? <laughs> I'm just no. Messing, no. I'm just messing with you. What I think you that everyone on my team was like, you have a really good draw. Like, you're going to win it. And then the bets came out, and, like, all my friends who weren't on the team were like, dude, you're plus 1,500. Like, the field's plus 1,500. I'm about to go put a $1,000 bet on you. Like, the, the non-D1 athletes, of course. But, like, everyone was like, I'm going to go bet on you. Like, <laughs> you're going to win this. Of course, non-D1 athletes. So, did anybody yeah. break you off a chunk after they bet on you or not? No, I don't. I'm not. No? All right. <laughs> uh, so, you, you follow the lines, too, huh? Well, I just saw it on Flow. Like, okay. I'm always on Flow. So, when I saw that article, I was like, oh, let's see what they put me in. I was like, they don't have my name on here. They're considering me the field. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. So what's your mindset going into this? You were All-American freshman year. You won 33 last year, did an All-American. What's your mindset going into the tournament? Uh, no pressure. Um, I don't know. Just go out and enjoy it. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So I had a lot of fun. <laughs> you did. Look, you, first match looked strong. Bresser looked strong. You got to Rivera. Did you have? Did you game plan him? I mean, you dominated that guy. From I didn't really watch much film on him. Okay. Uh, the thing I did watch where I got a lot of confidence was how Michic beat him. Michic is like a lefty, high C, uh, rode him for four minutes, and I was just like, that's like my style. So I didn't feel too nervous about wrestling him. Um, really, the whole year, I was kind of like, there's one guy I need to beat. That's uh, Spencer Lee. And even when Rivera and Pitch beat him, like, no disrespect to them, of course, they're great competitors. It was still, like, Spencer Lee's the guy to beat. Yeah. So. So, so before we get to that match, just stepping back, you start the year in red shirt. What's going on? Is that your idea, coach's idea, combination of the two? Uh, well, I made the U23 world team. Yep. And the worlds were in the middle of November. Yep. So that was awesome. But, uh... <laughs> You yeah, know, like, it just made sense. I hadn't used my red shirt. We were planning on using it either this year or next year or whatever. Um, and it was like, let's just take it. Um, we'll see what happens. And then Louis started uh, busting weight, um, and he needed me in there. And so I was like, yeah, I got, I got my brother's back. Let's go out. Let's do it. I'm ready to roll. Um, and then it started gearing towards, okay, let's look at these top guys. Let's go, let's go and attack them. What kind of person are you on red shirt? Like, are you just frustrated you're not wrestling? Or are you just like, 
cruising along, U23s, I'll, you know, take it easy here? Uh, I'm training super hard. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, like, before dual meets, I'm like, okay, does anyone need me to work out with them? Does anyone need a drill partner? Does, uh, does anyone want to get extra with me? Like, whatever I can do to help my guys, right? Um, I don't know. I didn't think much different other than, like, there was no pressure to compete at all, which was kind of nice for that little that little month before I came out. But um, Is that what it was? How long uh, was it from U23s to when you – was it a month? A month in between U23s and, and uh, when the uh, duel, pretty much exactly. All right. So you don't sound like a guy who can turn off his brain. Is that <laughs> – like the competitive, I don't mean the, well, can you turn off your brain? Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. I'm always competing So in you, the little things. What like, are you thinking about when you're alone? Like at night, like what do you think about? Uh, I'm usually cruising through flow, or watching documentaries, anything to better myself. Like sometimes I got to force myself to get off, right? And, uh. Like last week, I just wanted to take a week away from wrestling and just kind of enjoy life. And so one of my roommates is just overly obsessed with wrestling, like to the max. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'd hear a whistle, and I'd be like, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> like, no wrestling, no wrestling. He's just watching because videos Because then I online. want to get on it. Just watch. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's funny. Um, <laughs> did you crack? Were you able to stay away for the week? Kind of. Kind of. I so mean, you slipped a little it's bit? It's hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's hard. I tried my best. What brought you back? What was it? Uh, social media. Social it always media. does. does it? You see something on social media, you're like, oh, that looks interesting. And then you start going on Flow, going on YouTube, looking up different matches, and then it's like, it's like an addiction. It's an addiction. And this addiction started, or the drive started at an early age, right? Like, these are some of your first memories. Oh, yeah. So... Mm-hmm. Tell me, were you in diapers? Like, do you remember being in diapers, or is it just after that? Or like, what was it? Do you want to be a national champ? Uh, no, I was out of I was out of diapers. Um, okay. My my brothers, my older brothers, kind of like one of them basically potty trained me because he forced me to sit on the toilet until I went to the restroom. But like, I was like one and a half, two, like super young. Okay. And so by the time I was three. I was like getting doubled in the in the living room and wrestling stuffed animals and and just dreaming of being on this national stage. So, were you watching wrestling at that time, or is it just through your brother? I was watching like high school wrestling because he was uh, he was wrestling, but like I would go in my singlet and go watch him and uh, like Kamara Usman uh, went to Arlington Arlington Bowie, and that was like right. Uh, that's like 30 minutes away from my house. And uh, I saw him this year at South Beach, and he was like, oh, little Jack-Jack, remember when you were in singlets? And, and was, like everyone remembers me in this little singlet with a full cut, just like sitting there watching wrestling, asking when it was my turn to go, my turn to wrestle. That's and then like, I had to wait a while. But Was your dad a wrestler too? No. So how did your no. brother get into it? He was, uh, he was a feisty... Young and he needed he, he an outlet. He needed the outlet. <laughs> Can you take him now? Oh, he's, he's too big. big. Is he too big? He's, he's too big. big. He wrestled at one sixty five. Oh, jeez. So you need to bring like a pipe or something if you're going to take him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talk talking about bigger. Tell me the difference in like when you're out on the mat between wrestling one twenty five, one thirty three. Oh my gosh, it's, it's like. like Ah, I don't even like. I can just hit so many more things. I'm so much better on top. Like last year, I was average on top, but this year it was like I'm turning everyone. Yeah, like turn Foz who doesn't get turned. Like, and it, I wasn't getting many turns. I only had two techs at 133. My freshman year, I had 15. Yeah, like uh, it's just it's insane. And then you wrestle guys like the biggest thing about 133 and 125 is the length. Like, everyone's super tall. I was the shortest in my weight class by far. And then I wrestled Tariq Wilson in the duel. He's like six feet tall at 133. Right. He can be wrestled 157, right? He's so big. He, he's tall. He eats a cheeseburger and he's at 149. <laughs> like, 
He was so tall, it was like impossible for me to wrestle him because even if I down block, he was like, he's got both arms around my legs. And it was like, it was crazy. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's totally different. Got it. Um, what's your relationship like with cutting weight? Like, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I enjoy to do it just because like it makes me do extra and I feel better about myself. Um, but like, if I get down to weight, it's like, no one wants to talk to Jack three yeah. hours, four hours before I end. Little Jack, Jack, uh, angry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So do you feel that as an, a mental, like I've talked to guys who tell me they don't cut weight, but you know, their body fat is like at 6% anyway. But like, I'm just wondering, do you find cutting weight makes you mentally sharper or do you just makes you grumpy? Uh... I, I don't know if it makes me mentally sharper. I think I it allows me to hit better moves yeah. because I'm bigger. Yeah. Um, I think my mentality is the same. But definitely, like, like Scott Green, yep. whenever I went to Wyoming Seminary, it was like, Jack, lean dog's mean dog. And that's always been, like, that's always been my head, you know? People don't go to the zoo to watch the, the lions sleep. And like be fat and fed. They they want to see him eat. Right. They want to go out and see him fight. <laughs> fight over some food, yeah. some steaks. Mm-hmm. One of the things that you know impressed me when I talked to you at seminary is that you told me you wanted to wrestle the best. You wanted to wrestle Lee and Suriano. When did that mentality solidify in your brain? Um, I mean, pretty recently. Like that's always been something I've said. Yeah. But I don't think it's ever been something that I've really lived out entirely. Interesting. But like, as soon as I saw my like bracket, it was I had to be Bresser, then Rivera, and then Lee. Um, and those were three out of the top five guys. Yeah. Like I couldn't have gotten a harder draw yeah. in that bracket. Um, and I was ready to go. I was uh, I was pretty pumped about it, honestly, just because I wanted to test myself and. And going to Worlds and wrestling all these guys, like, internationally and see them do well at the Oregon, um and stuff like that, it's it's really motivating. So, so you, yeah. you 23s November, a month later, back in the lineup. Do you think that the time did, – did you have enough folk-style matches to feel like you wrestled your best at the championships? Or did you, oh, yeah. Yeah? And mm-hmm. do, you, do you think that – Switching it up gave you less of a grind and was an advantage. I think it was an advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that the, I mean, personally, I think the folk style season is about two months too long. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it because I love it. But like by the end of the season, uh, last year I was so banged up, like both knees, my neck. I had a couple of concussions. Like it was bad. It was really bad. And this year, I didn't have a single minor injury. Nothing that was I was dealing with was crazy, and I only had 17 matches going into the tournament. Um, but I had been wrestling and making weight for three or two months, two and a half months. So I didn't I didn't feel like I was behind at all because I had just as much of a season as I had in high school. Um, it just wasn't five months long like it like it is usually. You'd be a supporter of a one semester sport in college. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I just, I don't want to seem like a, a sissy for wanting that, right? Like, I'll do it, but I think that it would it'd be better for the athletes. Yep. Um, maybe not better for the fans, but at the same time, it's like, what are the November Opens doing for everyone? No one's going to watch those. Uh, I do, but I'm just weird. Uh, <laughs> I got you. There's not a lot of fans watch, and there's a lot of great wrestling going unwatched, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... What are you thinking before the finals? You going out to wrestle Lee? When was the last time you wrestled him? High school? Mm-hmm. He attacked me sophomore year of high school at the Ironman semis. Ironman semis. Where's your confidence level, and where are you at mentally going out in the in the finals? You know, I'm a little nervous. You know, um, I think I gave him a lot of respect. Uh, like Rivera was like, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna. Uh, I know he's going to come out and he's going to want to hit me in the face and I'm going to want to hit him in the face. Like, it's going to be a brawl. And then I think Spencer was like, this guy is a couple-time world champ. 
Like, I'm a little nervous to hit myself, and I think it took me a while to get in a rhythm. He's great. He's a great. Both guys are great competitors. Uh, he's great to wrestle, but like, I wish I kind of went out with a little less respect for him. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. What, what were you thinking? Anything during the match? Like, I got to get going. Like, what kind of self talk you got going on during that match? Uh so all year I've been telling myself just one word over and over again: just spar, just spar. Um, I think that I'm really like good at wrestling because I like to wrestle. I like to spar. Like I'll just go for hours uh, with my coach or, or with my partners, and we'll just go and we'll flow. And so I feel like when I'm flowing um, and not trying to use like all my energy and trying to beat up someone, it's like I'm hitting good moves, I'm scoring points, and I don't get tired. Is the most important part. Yeah. Um. I don't know. So, like, I was telling myself that. It's just, uh, I mean, bottom was huge. I get one escape there, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I watched the match again today with, my, with Trent, and it was like, I was close to winning that scramble. I just needed to move my hands. Um, and then it was like, I didn't even try and get out. Maybe that was because I had, like, I gave him too much respect on top. And, like, Rivera and Pitch did a great job of standing up, staying on their feet, and uh, getting out eventually. So I think that changes up. Then, I don't know, maybe a different match. Are you the kind of guy that plays matches over and over in your head? Like, do you have matches from a few years ago or even this year besides that that you play over? Only the bad ones. Only the bad ones. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, is, do they motivate you, or do they grind on you? Like, what are they? Uh, sometimes they, some like they definitely all motivate me for sure. But sometimes they're like they're nagging. Yeah. Like that one, it's like I get a locked up like a far side cradle, and it's like, man, like if I just did a couple things differently, or maybe if I tried harder, it's like I can't do that. I can't let that weigh on me because then it's like I'm not getting better. Right. And kind of relying on the pass too much. Gotcha. Um, thoughts after the match? Anything? Uh, no, I was... Uh, I don't know. He was a great competitor. I was really happy to wrestle him on the big stage. I'm excited to have the rematch. Good. Sounds good. I uh, wanted to take you back to last year at 33. You seem to have Austin DeSanto's number earlier in the season you beat him a couple times um that would, one, you, you won an injury default too or was that a third match that you won yeah i think i was winning and then i hit like a standing grammy and he headbutt the mat and okay. got a concussion tell me what was it that allowed you to to kind of seemingly no one had his could figure him out you had him earlier in the season went the other way at ncaa's but what was it did, did you game plan him or is it just you your fundamentals are tight, and he couldn't get your elbow. Uh, no, I just I didn't really respect him <laughs> okay. at all. Yeah. Uh, and like I felt like he only had one move. Yeah. And then it was like he hit me with the one move in NCAA's for six, and it's like how do you come back from that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, he goes hard, but I think if he wrestles someone with really good technique. It kind of messes him up. Like, Michich has his number. Michich is a really good technician. Yeah. Um, or if someone's good on top. So, like, Lezak got him. Right. A couple times this year. I don't know who else he lost to. Uh, I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. Yeah, me too. I don't know. I mean, yeah, kind of at the beginning of the season, it was like, this guy's just got a crazy motor and he only has one move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lose to him. And then it was like, at NCAAs, my mindset changed. I didn't really believe I deserved to win. I felt like I kind of was lazy and didn't have a good off season, didn't have a good regular season. and I had a lot of doubts, and I just, I don't know. I had a really bad tournament, and uh, you know, it happens. Did any of that, I mean, did you have to work through any of that tournament before you got to Pittsburgh? No. No. I, I felt like, like I deserved it. Yeah. I worked my tail off, like, from the end of March 
from sophomore year to the uh, beginning of the tournament, it was like, it was a whole different me. Whole different me. Gotcha. Taking you back to being a kid. You very early age. You want to be the champ. You want to be a champion. What was it about the sport that hooked you? I don't know. Honestly, it was like I would. I did it because my brother did it, and he was like my role model as a kid. I just I looked up to him so much, and I wanted to be like him, and so I wanted to win just like he did. And so I worked my tail off. But it was like, it wasn't until middle school where I was like, I really owned the sport for myself. It was more like I was doing it for him or doing it for my parents. And so it was like probably around seventh grade uh, that I was like, I really want to do this, like for real. And so uh, I think that's when I started started scoring a lot more points. Interesting. And... Tell me a little bit about growing up wrestling in Texas. Um, you know, there's actually some good talent in Texas that I think gets overlooked. Like, Bo like not every. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> he's kid, not no overlooked. Kid. Yeah, yeah. But like, there were some tough matches for yeah. sure. Um, but other than that, it would be like I get to go to this tournament, and I mean, it was more like I walk on the mat, get a tech, click. But it was, like, fun for me because I got to coach my guys, my teammates, and it was, like, really cool experience uh, as a teammate more than anything. Um, but I love Texas, so representing it, I'm, like, when I wrestle at NCAAs and stuff and seeing the hot spots of, like, me and Bo right. in, like, just the Dallas area, it's really cool. Heat map. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, two guys can, can do that, and hopefully it grows. I mean, I know, like, I'm – I know AJ Ferrari is uh, at Bergen, but like I still consider him a Texas guy. Yeah. Like I'm sure he's gonna do great things. Braden Redlands at Ohio State. Like there are some guys that are gonna come up and do really well in college. I think, uh, and I hope they do because uh, I have a lot of Texas pride, and I have a lot of pride, and I have a lot of pride in how they do. Any thoughts on the college down there that would pick up wrestling? Uh, I don't know. It'd be sweet if UT or A and M got one. Um, I've always heard rumors where I was like, oh, Texas is going to get a program and blah, blah, blah is going to be the coach. So, like, three different times. I was like, that's sweet. Like, it'd be so cool if Texas ever got a program. Like, I don't know. If I never, like, got the coaching job at UVA, um, like, because I would always want Garland to be the head coach, right? Yeah. But, like, if he ever retired and I could be the coach at UVA, I'd want that. But if, if not, it would be like, what if I get to go and start a program at UT? Yeah. And be the coach there and get to represent my home state. Like, that would be amazing. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it would be so yeah. fun. You wrestled at Trinity Christian, had a little break, went to a seminary, came back. Can you tell me a little bit about your high school wrestling and why you went back and forth? Uh, I kind of, like, got a little homesick just at Pennsylvania. Um, I had great partners, great coaches, and I really enjoyed my experience, like, to the fullest, I'm like forever grateful for what Coach Green and Coach Middish did for me up there. They really, really made me a better wrestler, and I, I still have like followed uh, Wyoming Seminary, like Bo Bartlett, huge fan of Bo. Yeah. Um. But where's I really he, wanted to come back. To and where's Bo going to school? Do you know? I want him to go to UVA, <laughs> but I don't think that will happen. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know where he's gonna go. Yeah, but I want him to come to UVA. He wouldn't tell me last month. I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's playing that thing close to the vest. I'm sure everybody wants the kid, but oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but it was mainly just family. It was like I got one more year to be at home. Like if I'm going to coach after college, like we said earlier, there's no slate, no spots in Texas, so yeah. I want to be near my family. Like this isn't just a four year plan. This is going to be 2025. 20, Maybe, you know, I don't know if I'll ever come back to Dallas. So let's go and spend the last year back home. And um, I've already committed. So I'm going to college. I just need to get better. And Kendall was here or back home. And my other coach, Melvin Lofton, was back home. And so I felt comfortable with the coaches I had, obviously. I mean, Kendall Cross, Olympic champ. 
How long you was know, he? Better than that. Was he the coach at Trinity Christian? He he was an assistant. Yeah, he helped out. Did he coach you before that too? Mm -hmm. He has been coaching me since. Okay, so it was like he was in Dallas for a little bit, and I was like four or five, and he did a private with me, and he went over to my dad and he was like, "Yeah, you know, uh, I'm not really into the babysitting stuff." Um, <laughs> He said that, no. And my dad was like, oh, well, we'll just keep paying you. Like, if he just picks up one thing, then you're good. And awesome. uh, sure enough, it was a chess wrap. was, like, the only thing he he taught me. And I still hit it to this day. Uh, I have a really good chess wrap. And I guess I learned that when I was four. <laughs> that is awesome. World team member, wrestling babysitter. But you get the chess wrap out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you still talk to him today? Yeah, I'm visiting this weekend in New York City. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Uh, how old are you right now? 21. 21. Do you remember what your recruiting process was like? Kind of. Um, I took a ton of unofficial freshman and sophomore year. I felt like I'll just go and visit these schools and get out of these colleges, like, looking at me just as much as I'm looking at them. Um... So I was really into Michigan. I was always into Michigan because my brother transferred from Ohio State to North Carolina. And he, like, kind of, like, it didn't go so well at Ohio State. So what did I do? I felt like I wanted to spite Ohio State almost. <laughs> and so I was a big Michigan fan, like, my entire childhood. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Um, so Michigan and then North Carolina, of course, because that's where he went. And then Virginia and Northwestern. Were like my top four. You chose Virginia. I mean, do you have any, was it stressful? And do you have any advice for kids who are going through it right now? Um, I would say like it wasn't stressful. Um, sometimes it's like no. I mean, it wasn't stressful. I think that you know you know where you want to go. If you take your visits and you know the people and you feel like this is a spot, um, then it shouldn't be stressful, right? I met Coach Garland and I was like, this guy doesn't just want me to be another clog in the wheel, right? And he wants me to, he wants me to be a great person. Like he actually cares about who I am, um, and that's what I needed. That's how I felt Kendall and I's relationship was, and that's how I felt like Melvin and I's relationship was. It wasn't wasn't just about wrestling. It was about like being a part of a family. And I don't want to wrestle for someone that just wants my wrestling ability. I want someone that wants me for who I am. Right. That's what I wanted. Um, and I felt like Steve Garland offered that the best. Sounds good. Uh, no advice for anybody going through it? Um... Take your time. Uh, I know I made my decision early, but I'd say take your time. Um, don't just go where the money is. Uh, and don't just go to Penn State because everyone's gone there. <laughs> okay. No, nah, I'm kidding. If I that's where you need it, if that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. I got it. Um, <laughs> but they, they're, they got an embarrassment. Just make, make, just, just a joke. Just a quick joke. <laughs> they got an embarrassment <laughs> of riches in the in the in there, uh, and the rumors at nationals are crazy about who they're gonna get. I don't know if you've heard any of that stuff. Like Kyle Canal committed there, and then I guess everyone's rumoring about Seth Gross, maybe. Yeah, right. It's beyond that. Like at twenty-five. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and yeah, can Canal even beat Beard? Let's talk about you. We're not even talking about Penn State right now. But <laughs> what has been your biggest challenge in wrestling? Uh, one more thing about the Penn State oh, thing. Sorry. I, don't know, I don't know if you saw the Dylan Palacio tweet whenever he saw the Kyle Cannell, um I didn't. commitment. He was like, you're not, you're supposed to fight the Sith, not join them. <laughs> I did not see that. But I'll tell you, that guy is a hoot to follow on Twitter when he beats the man. <laughs> Dude, that is hysterical beating guy. What is it? Take. Take the homeless guy down or something? Yeah, yeah these guys are like – one of them was like, I carry rice for – that weighs 200 pounds. Like, what? <laughs> that guy is hysterical. I tried to get him to do an interview and he was like all into it. Then he wanted me to pay him 500 bucks. I was like, dude, I'm not, I'm not, this is a hobby. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>
Good follow on Twitter, though. Uh, For sure. Where were I don't even know what I just asked you. Uh, oh, biggest big challenge. challenge. Yeah, yeah. Biggest challenge in wrestling. Uh, this is a tough one because I've, I feel like I've had a lot of adversity, right? There's injuries. There's a mental side. There's, a, there's like, I mean, there's the everyday grind of just a college wrestling room. Right. Um, the biggest challenge of wrestling is wrestling to your fullest potential when everything else in your life it seems like it's crashing down. Um, when everything in life isn't sunshines and rainbows, uh, and still you're competing at the top of your game, then uh, you've overcome the biggest challenge in wrestling. Uh, that mentality, I think that I think that's it. I think, uh, yeah. Anything we should know about the crashing down, or is that just the? No, it's just like you know, like the little things. It's like, oh, I failed this test, and yeah. um, you know, things aren't great with my family. Things aren't great with my girlfriend. Yeah. Like everything's going wrong. Do you ever like, think about uh, that stuff while you're wrestling? Sometimes, if yeah. I'm not in the zone, it's like, you know, I'm thinking about how I did on the test, and I'm not thinking about the match. Like, uh, when I wrestled the Tech Kid, I had the flu, I lost my wallet, I got in a car wreck, I had the worst drive ever with Garland, he made me want to puke. I was like, I had the worst day of my life, it, like, it was the year, and it was like, I wasn't even in that match, I got exhausted in like a minute, and it was just like... Get me through this. Yeah, that's, that, that's tough. And, you know, it's not necessarily in competition, but I always tell my own kid, you know, if you can practice hard when all that stuff is going bad, now he's young, he's uh, 11. It, mm -hmm. That's where you actually make the mental kind of thing. You're like, if you can work through some of that stuff. But it's, all right, that's cool. Uh, or not cool, but that's a funny day, man. <laughs> that's it was uh, it was a horrible day. It was like right before I was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Oh man, what's your biggest accomplishment? What do you think? What are you most proud of accomplishing in the sport of wrestling? Um, there's no accolade that I place above one another. Honestly, it's like when I'm done wrestling, like even at NCAA's, and everyone's congratulating me, and that stuff's cool. But like when like I see kids come up and like. Oh my gosh, that's Jack Mueller, or can I have your autograph? Like stuff like that. Whenever I can make an impact on these kids, like because and I get to sign their shirt or give them my headgear. I remember I had a tweet about it earlier, and like I was making a joke about giving it away. But, oh, after uh, the finals, was that? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to readjust one because they suck yeah. to readjust. But like when a kid asks me that or or something like that, and I know that these kids are looking up to me, it's like. It's so motivating to, to be better at wrestling, but, like, be a better person, too. Because I remember, like, I still remember the guys whenever I was young, and I'd ask for autographs. I remember the guys who treated me awesome, and I remember the guys who treated me like crap. And uh, who, was, who were they? I mean, like, I was a huge fan of, like, Johnny Hendricks and, uh, and Mark Perry and Cole Conrad was one. Like, he, like, let me take a picture with him. Jake Herbert was a great guy. Like, uh... Like, I mean, Jake Herbert, I got a picture with him, too, after. It was, like, right before his Ben Askren match, okay. which I know was, was bad. But, like, still, yeah. it was it was really cool. Um, these guys were so kind to me. Jay Jagger was super kind to me. Uh, like, I don't know. It was just really, really motivating and inspiring for me um, because these college guys gave me, like, just a, a few seconds of their time. And they were my heroes. Right. So um, if I can do that for a young kid, like that's my greatest accomplishment in this sport, to inspire someone to be a better person and be a better wrestler. So I don't know how to word this so you'll respond, but is there anybody you don't like in the like sport? From the past. Oh, I'm not going into that. <laughs> no, nothing. All right. Cool. <laughs> nothing. All right. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right, man. <laughs> some people like to, some people don't. Um, all right, you've been around the sport almost your entire life. If you could make two rule changes for college wrestling to make the sport better, what would it be? Oh, I only get two? <laughs> you go. You have five. You have ten. 
I think they need to do something about the hands and face. That needs to go. That's yeah. got to be number one. That's the dumbest rule ever. Yeah. The dumbest, the dumbest rule ever. They, I get. I'll, I'll just do three. I'll, they need to get rid of headgears. Because okay. why? Why even have a headgear? I got cauliflower because of the headgear. It, it got a little loose, and then bam, and then it, it blew up my ear. Um, so it doesn't do anything. And then the stalling out of bounds. They just need to do a push out or go back to the old rules. Yeah, yeah. They can't do this like in the middle because I was in my first match in NCAA's, and the guy was like had his arms out and just drove out, and I couldn't circle in. Yeah. And so I was just like trying to circle in, and they hit me with stalling, and he was just pushing me out. It was like, okay, he clearly pushed me. Then I was like, we went up to the ref afterwards, and he was like, that was a push. And he was like, yeah, I got it wrong. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said, really? Yeah. That's awesome. I know this, like, get, this, yeah. there's so many judgment rules on them. I blame the rules committee for creating these rules. I don't blame the refs for because they got so many things that, like, the one that really bugs me is the scramble back points start at 90 degrees, but regular back points start at 45. And it, the more judgment there is, the more complicated the rules, the harder they are to enforce. But I'll get over that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were talking about talking to Coach Paulson, watching the match. Are there any more Paulsons that are going to join the staff? <laughs> I don't think there are. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just, a big family, literally. Just, yeah. All right. Um, what kind of self talk do you have during matches and, and practice? And is it different? Uh, like just talking to myself? Yeah. Like when you're in practice, are you like, are you telling yourself to do different things? And when you're in a general match, are you, are you thinking? Are you flowing? Like what, what's going on inside your head? I'm just telling myself to spar in matches. Yeah, like that's my whole thing. Just like about spar. Right. Um, but in practice, it's like, all right, let's dig myself a hole and let's fight out of it. You know, put myself in the hardest situation possible and let's get out of it. Um, whether it be just keep going or having a couple guys go in on you or, or do a little bit extra after a tough workout. Um, whatever I can do to become 1% better in my mentality, like warfare, um, just go, 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 as hard as you can. There's not a lot of strategizing or whatever yeah. in the practice room. It's just like, go as hard as you can. And if you if you are, like, then you'll come up with something. Um, but yeah, digging yourself a, a hole and getting out of it, fighting out of it. I'm not, sure, I'm not quite sure of all the qualifier things that go into this, but are you – are you considering trying to take a, a red shirt in the future or possibly an Olympic red shirt? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We haven't really gotten that far yet. Yeah. We got a, we got a couple things to do in May. Yeah. Oh, uh, what, Oh, um, uh, uh, what's in May? Trials. Trials. Got mm. it. Where are you wrestling? What weight? 57. What are you walking around at? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. we're heavy. Skip. All right. <laughs> I, I, you know, we talked about your relationship with cutting weight earlier. It was a trap, by the way. I, I, I had, I knew where you were gonna wrestle. I just wanted to see if you're gonna tell me what you weigh right now. Uh, all right. Can uh, you, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, so I took the week off and I gave myself a week to gain whatever weight I was. I was walking around at one fifty two. One fifty two. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Oh, I don't have a favorite. Oh, canes. Canes. Raisin canes. And, and you don't have a favorite food? It's just food in general that is your favorite? I just love food. I love burgers. Love burgers. All right. Any interesting hobbies? Like, do you excel at anything off the wrestling mat? Not really. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, I'm super competitive in like every game, so I'm usually pretty good at those. Um, like board games, I love board games, video games, whatever. Like even like Ultimate Frisbee or stuff like that. Anybody that you like watching, whether it's American, international, is there any do you like watching wrestlers? Oh, I love watching. Uh, favorite wrestler. Nancy Double A's got to be Bo Nickel. Just, 
out of pure Texan. Yeah. Um, He's pretty exciting but too. I really like watching uh, just guys that excel in like their own styles. So, like Mark Hall's defense or Yanni's scrambling. Jaden Ironman is super fun to watch. Love watching Jaden Ironman. Yeah. Uh, senior level guys, I bounce around a lot. It's kind of hard to like idolize some of these guys if I know I'm gonna compete against them soon. Totally. Uh, but like Chimizo's defense, Sajulai of uh, there was this Georgian that wrestled at U23s who got silver at senior level. I think his name was like. Started with a K. Kinchadze. Kinchadze was his name. He was sweet to watch. I like watching the rivalry between Gino and Taha at 125 kilos. I mean, I'm just a fan. Yeah. So if you're writing a, a script for yourself for five years and 20 years, like, what's what do you what do you have scripted for five years in your mind? And are you a lifer? Like, what are you doing at UVA that's going to take you away from wrestling? Anything? Uh, I don't know, you know, like I'm getting an econ degree, so maybe if like some doors open up and I can get a sweet job, like that would be awesome, but it's so hard to leave this sport that my first memories are, like, are like born from, I guess, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't ever see myself leaving this sport unless, uh, some crazy things happen, but, um, Five years, so I want to win a national title next year. I want, I'm going to get my master's at UVA, so I'll definitely be here for another year being a grad assistant. Uh-huh. Um, and then I would like to do the Olympic circuit. Um, we'll see where that takes me. Um, and then hopefully make an Olympic team one year. Or 2024, and then after that, get a coaching job. Um, At UVA or in uh, Texas? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Going back to your economics degree, are you, are you talking an academic position or something like for a, a company on Wall Street or in finance? Oh, I don't know about an academic position. All right. But uh, maybe something in like finance or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that, like, I understand it for the most part, uh, and so I'm getting a degree in it. Does UVA uh, teach anything about the Austrian school? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, just checking. I'm an armchair economist in my uh, spare time. Um, all right. You still love the sport the same way you did as a kid? Yeah, I'd say I love it more. Anything change about that love? Is it a Um... I think that it changed from being like a love-hate relationship. Like when I was a kid, it would be like, I can't go hang out with my friends because I got to go to practice or got to go to a tournament in Oklahoma on a Saturday. So I'm really excited to wrestle and like we have this day off, but I want to wrestle and like it's hard for me to stay away from the sport. Like I said, yeah. um, I just really enjoy watching people like make their art and I enjoy making my own art, you know, I feel like it's a, it's a it is a martial art, it's a, but I feel like I'm like, almost like Picasso out there, or someone like, that is really good at what they do, and like, people enjoy to watch it, um, and I love other people do it too, um, uh, love watching other people do it too, it's just, uh, it's a great sport, and I love the community, like everyone in the community is so cool to each other, um, and everyone's got so much respect for one another. Um, and it's hard to get that in like some other sports, I think. Gotcha. Um, it's, wrestling's full of respect. Tons and that's a, another cool I've thing. Seen, I, you know, I've had Olympic champions tell me the thing to keep them humble is on a given day they can get thumped in the practice room. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's humbling, let alone in front of your friends and family. For sure. Lightning round. Funniest wrestler you, you know besides uh, Dylan Palacios? Oh... Uh, I mean, I guess recently it's been Ben Askin, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> character, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Coach Garland. Oh, which is emotional. Emotional? Uh, yeah, great guy. Uh, 
Favorite food? Well, we already covered that. Worst hair in college wrestling? Worst hair in college wrestling? Uh, my, my buddy, buddy J.I.L. just to mess with him. <laughs> Plus his balls. What can you tell me about the, the Paulson brothers? Do they fight amongst each other? Like, I don't, I don't know them very well. Like, what are the No, they don't fight at all. It's battle. annoying. Really? <laughs> because they, Travis always messes with me. And he, like, tries to get in my head during practice. Um... But Trent will be, like, uplifting, you know. But Travis will always be like, oh, he's breaking, or something like that. Really? Like, oh, Mueller's complaining again. <laughs> Just like, oh, leave me alone. Interesting. Uh, that's, it's, I don't know if there's another – I don't know if I've ever heard of another staff that's – right. and there's a Trev, – Trevor's there too, right? Yeah, their nephew. Their nephew. Okay. Um, three from the same family on the staff. Crazy stuff. Um mm -hmm. Anything you want to tell UVA fans or Jack Mueller fans? Yeah, just thanks for the support and uh, really means a lot to me. Uh, hopefully, I can make y'all proud and bring home a title next year. But if I don't, um, nothing's going to change about me. Um, and I'm just proud to proud to be a wrestler, proud to be a UVA wrestler. Hey, thanks for the time to talk to me today. Thank you for having me.